Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the BI Technologies Workgroup. Today, we have Rush Shah, Senior Solutions Architect for Premier, presenting about the future of BI in the era of self-service analytics. Please be sure to put your line on mute as this call is being recorded. Rush, thanks for joining. I will let you kick the session off. Hey, thanks, Madison. Um, I just wanted to, uh, before I start uh, this presentation, I wanted to just talk about a few housekeeping items, or not really housekeeping items, but uh, what we plan to do in the next two or three months. We have a lot of projects going on in the Asset Factory team that a number of members uh, that are coming to fruition uh, or that have already uh, completed their phase one and I wanted to uh, make sure that we showcase some of those assets that we have created, the ones where we can show it with anonymized data to all of you. So in the coming couple of months our, or coming three months, uh, we will be trying to do some of that work in these uh, work group sessions. We've always had an, uh, we've always had a little bit of longer breaks uh, for this work group sessions, and we kind of want to uh, establish a regular cadence and velocity. Uh, I also want to welcome everyone who is uh, part of this work group, all of our DAC members, if they are doing some really interesting project um, and what would like to share would like to share it with the general group on how on their approach of how they went about solving it, what they had to do in terms of information management, uh, data discovery, data profiling, and eventually uh, data presentation, how they went about that entire supply chain and implemented their projects. Uh, this would be a great forum for you to come forward and present it. So, uh, so I really appreciate if you guys participate in future. Uh, on some of these sessions that the Asset Factory team has been able to uh, create and develop for our members. So, you know, I mean, this is a topic that we kind of took up a couple of years ago when we were introducing Tableau in PCE, and we talked about self-service analytics. But we never quite talked about, and we, we, keep, we continue talking about this and the challenges of self-service analytics, either through uh, Premier's Advisor Live, uh, forums or through the DAC forum. We talk about self-service analytics quite a bit, it seems to me, but we never contextualize this uh, movement that's going on over the last three or four years in terms of traditional BI. What's happening to traditional BI as it confronts self-service analytics? They are not the same thing as we realize. We realize that traditional business intelligence has been trying to play catch up with self-service analytics. And we also see the counter trend where the self-service analytics vendors are trying to become full-fledged enterprise business intelligence vendors. But there's a lot more going on in this area. So I just wanted to take a few, maybe 30, 40 minutes to kind of talk about this. Um, so I wanted to start with a sort of a prologue in this. Uh, Milan Kundera is a Czech writer living in France, uh, often talked about as a potential Nobel laureate uh, in literature. He's got some phenomenal books, the most famous amongst which is called The, Unfer the Unbearable Lightness of Being. You might have seen the Hollywood movie on it. Uh, I'm a big fan of his and I always, I've always remembered this quote, not verbatim, but I've remembered this quote for several reasons. Uh, one of them being that how does a new era come about? How does, how does something die and something new emerge? And so when I was reading this book, uh, it's, this, this paragraph kind of struck with me uh, that, you know, everyone wants, has a potential writer within him. And so the entire human species has a good reason to go down into the streets and shout, we're all writers. For everyone is pained by the thought of disappearing unheard and unseen into an indifferent universe. And because of that, everyone wants, well, there's still time to turn himself or herself into a universe of words. And one morning, and it may be soon, when everyone wakes up as a writer, the age of universal deafness and incomprehension will have arrived. 
you could just take this and replace the words writer and the desire to write into a corporate setting and replace it with the word analytics, analysis, and just about get the same result potentially. Uh, not necessarily, of course, but that is the big fear of self-service analytics in a nutshell. If everyone is going to do analysis, then who is going to consume that analysis? Then how is analysis going to be curated? Then how is governance going to happen? And so what is going to happen to analytics in an era where everyone is starting to do it? Right? That's the big fear that we all have. Because everyone is becoming a writer, then who is going to be the reader? Who is going to be the listener, right? So that's the dichotomy that we have, that the death of business intelligence happens at the birth of self-service analytics. Or is it true or is it not? What, what, what does it look like? So as we, as we contemplate this future of business intelligence in this era of self-service analytics, it's important to understand a little bit about the history. Not that it's going to shed any light on what's going to happen in future because technology by its very nature is disruptive and will take directions that we cannot necessarily predict. Uh, so, however, it would be important to look at this evolution and see how business intelligence is used right now, right? Uh, it's, and maybe we can glean something out of the intent of business intelligence the idea of business intelligence and how it is actually practiced. There is a vast gulf between the idea of business intelligence and how it is actually practiced. So we'll just look at the history and the definition a little bit. Uh, the term business intelligence was coined in a, uh, by an author of Encyclopedia of Commercial and Business Anecdotes. There was such a thing, by the way. And he used it to describe how a banker gained profit by, receive, by receiving and acting upon uh, information about his environment. Uh, this gentleman was called Richard Miller Devins and he was describing a banker called Sir Henry Fernese who gained profit by receiving and acting upon information uh, about his competitors. So he was really talking about competitive intelligence or corporate espionage in some sense. Uh, that's what he meant by business intelligence back then. Of course, it's more modern meaning of business intelligence uh, was popularized in at the end of 90s by Howard Dresner. Um, some of you may know Dresner Advisory Services. Uh, it publishes a survey of BI technologies. Uh, he was at the time a partner in Gartner Advisors, uh, which publishes obviously the most popular business intelligence uh, survey or business intelligence, yeah, business intelligence survey. Uh, and helps enterprises choose the right technology uh, for their use cases. So the more popular meaning was, of course, derived by Howard Dresner, but in the meantime, there was a lot of evolution or a little bit of evolution that happened in the 60s and the 80s around decision support systems and then later executive or management information systems. Uh, as you know, BI is still in universities, in several universities, still called management information systems. They still don't use the word BI. Uh, I myself graduated in my management information systems, not business intelligence. So, so that term is still used a lot interchangeably with uh, business intelligence systems. But it was really in the late 90s and early 2000s that uh, the evolution of uh, business intelligence accelerated, or the evolution of the technology to implement business intelligence accelerated. And it started with the emergence of OLAP systems, the SAR and Snowflake schema data warehouses. Then you saw the emergence of multidimensional cubes with SQL Server being the most prominent of them. And later in 2000, you saw data preparation, data preparation and visualization technologies emerge. And now, of course, they are dominating the market. Uh, let's look at some of the some of the definitions of business intelligence, right? So Gardner typically this is the definition that uh, is in standard usage uh, refers to business intelligence as an umbrella term that includes the applications and infrastructure tools uh, and best practices that allow you to improve and optimize decisions, business decisions. Uh, 
Um, you have the other technical encyclopedias which define business intelligence as a technology-driven process for analyzing data and for presenting actionable information, and so on and so forth. I think the most prominent feature that you will see uh, in these definitions is that business intelligence is uh, something technical, that it is a tool, a technology, a technical best practice, a technical knowledge that is used to bring intelligence to data, to transform data, to inform decision making, right? So this this is what, there is a technical bias to the definition of business intelligence as such, right? But business intelligence, if you look at it, is ubiquitous. To define or to say that reporting and analysis is performed by every department of an organization is to say that majority of purchases in U.S. are made by credit cards. It's really, you're overstating the obvious here, right? Why should a special department then furnish analytical needs of a company? If you look at this chart, every department of your company is already doing it. Why should we not be able to democratize data and offer business intelligence vending machines, if you will, on every floor of the department? In a, right? The desire to control your data destiny is ubiquitous, even if in reality business intelligence may not have become pervasive in your particular organization. That still is the goal of every CIO and every CFO and every chief operational officer, they want to make business intelligence pervasive, right? So what are the impediments to this kind of do-it-yourself business intelligence, self-service analytics, right? One of the things that we often observe in our environments is the complexity of technology. That's what we've seen traditionally. We've seen the complexity of technology hinders the entire enterprise adopting it. Uh, self-service analytics. The other thing that we have seen is specialized knowledge required to leverage some of this technology because it's complex, right? So, so these are the two traditional hurdles that we have seen, but it seems that that may be changing. Is it, is this, is this still the hurdle that we have? Uh, with the excess of world-class education and massively online open courses platforms like edX and Coursera. Uh, education is free and easily accessible by people for analytics. So that's one major change that has happened in the last five years. The other major change that has happened is technology is becoming easier. Technology to manage data, to perform and present analytics is becoming more easier than ever. So much so that we can replace the entire business intelligence supply chain of jobs, job descriptions, and skills, and replace it with a single BI analyst to perform this task. I, don't, I, I, I exaggerate when I say single, but what I mean by it is we can dramatically converge these activities, these job descriptions, into a single job description, into a single role, right? So you don't require that assembly line anymore. The other traditional fear that we have seen or fears that we have seen here is information chaos, right? If everybody's doing it, there is going to be information chaos. There is going to be proliferation of analytical assets that neither have any editorial oversight nor have any stakeholder buy-in. And this fear is partly because we subscribe to the idea that a single source of truth, idea of a single source of truth, and partly because we believe in a robust culture of governance, editorial oversight, and curating of assets. Now, while the latter is still important, the term single source of truth is becoming overused to the point of us abusing it. Advocating more often this term as a bureaucratic restriction than as something that empowers people in the organization. So, That's something that's really, really important to recognize, that some of our fears 
are either overblown or not necessarily bearing out in reality and some are being solved by technology itself and the le level of increasing aptitude in the new developers and the new analysts that are coming online. Right? Now, this is not to say that a semantically consistent model, repeatable or automated data integration jobs, you know, vocabulary harmonization, master data management, effective data visualizations, these things are extremely important. I'm not denying that. But they should not now, with the changing circumstance, require an act of Congress and meta meetings, meetings about meetings, about meetings, uh, for defining requirements and planning projects. Right? This problem is being resolved with world-class education and with easier to use technology as it's becoming fast. They're combining this technology again and again, right? So what you have now is a dawning of a new era. We have to concede that it has come about because of these two major factors changing. So I want to I want to talk about some misconceptions about business intelligence, just so that it it can allow us to understand what may change in the next few years in this area. So business intelligence is a discipline of using empirical and mathematical concepts, not just doing quant technical quantitative analysis. Right? It is also empirical. I want to emphasize the word empirical. Empirical and mathematical concepts to analyze business data, to measure and predict outcomes, and to enable decision making. Right. It should not be reduced merely to a platform or a set of technical skills to access and transform data. That's the first mistake we always make in business intelligence. So bringing intelligence to data requires an ability to interpret the business, to paint the of the market and to construct a narrative of its future from the raw materials of data. Right? Technical and quantitative know-how is not enough here. Business intelligence will allow the organization to verify the empirical gut-based understanding of the business with the facts as they exist in data. That gut-based understanding is always driving intel business intelligence. And we cannot just replace it. It is not an either-or proposition. The experience and intuitions of subject matter experts and industry leaders are as essential to business intelligence as the skills to access and transform data. Decisions informed by intuitions and vetted by facts make the practice of in business intelligence more than just a skill set. Imagination and experience are vital components to this. So. That's something that was not emphasized before, but I foresee that that's going to be emphasized more and more. You will not have the siloed business intelligence technology departments of the past. It's just not, it's just not scalable nor feasible in that sense. It's not just a function of the left brain anymore. With the advent of the data preparation and data visualization technology, uh, it's not just about showing numbers and pulling data and just presenting it, right? Technology and quantitative analysis can only go so far without the education and experience uh, in the subject matter of a business. Uh, traditionally, an education in business has involved learning of digital tools to perform analysis. It has been taken for granted that business intelligence is a left brain function. So much so that we can dismiss whatever has happened in the past as a misnomer for technical intelligence. Right? This is oblivious to the fact that business intelligence is the art of presenting data. The dyad terms, data surfacing and data presentation are often used interchangeably with the terms business intelligence. If it is not already, business intelligence must, to fulfill its real potential, become a discipline that practices the principles gleaned from not just technology, but also from communication science, applied mathematics, creative writing, and graphic design. Those last two will become more important as we think about the future. In short, we 
Business intelligence will require everyone to employ both the left and the right brain functions. And this can be evidenced by the fact that you are already seeing three new job descriptions become more and more prominent, more and more prominent in the industry. Data journalism, data designers, and data storytellers. Right? As the field of business intelligence continues to evolve, not only do we see blurring of distinctions, but we see the emergence of these fields. With the aid of easy to use data preparation, data discovery, and data visualization technologies, the focus is shifting on the creative aspects of business intelligence. And incorporating the knowledge of third party data with the business data and presenting it with graphic design and creative writing. That's what's changing right now. And partly it's changing because technical technology leaders realize that that's what needed to happen and that technology needed to be designed in such a way. And they realize that because there was always a grand canyon between theory and practice, right? The umbrella term business intelligence implied both information management and business intelligence functions. But more often than not, in most organizations, they are treated as separate departments of sub or subdivisions of the same department. These functions were further fragmented by proliferation of jobs and roles. So information management includes everything from data integration, data cleansing, semantic harmonization, master data management, text and content analytics, all of these things. And then we separated business intelligence from it, even though business intelligence meant both of these things, we separated it. And we had functions like data modeling, requirement analysis, data profiling, data preparation, reporting, data discovery, visualization, all of these different things going on by different people and different, partly different departments in an organization. So, in theory, we think of business intelligence as one function equally essential, as you saw my whole chart earlier, equally essential to all parts of the business. But in practice, we find an assembly line of people, roles, and job functions required to carry out the ideal task of business intelligence. Right? So, in practice, things are very different. We find isolation, subdivisions, sub-departments that perform all of these functions. And part of it, as we have mentioned before, was because there were technical challenges, there was uh, a whole know-how problem, educational challenges that are being resolved right now, right? So, so what is the promise that was not delivered in the past, right? Different departments in the, and that has changed right now. So we are now in a new era because we see different departments in our companies creating their own subdivisions of analytics. We are now in a new era because we see different departments in the company buying self-service data preparation and data discovery tools. We know they are bypassing IT and doing their sales and supply chain activities in the cloud. Right? We know it because we see people who know everything from data management, programming, and business intelligence. These kind of individuals are now emerging. Most importantly, we know it because we see technology that is bringing back together the function of information management and business intelligence and graphic design and creative writing into a single <laughs> software in a manner that is both easy to use and intuitive. So, if everybody is doing BI, and that's the big question, is BI, and if BI is being commoditized, if it is being subsumed by other fields, if it is becoming a subfield, is it special anymore, right? The old model obviously failed to deliver a scalable, flexible, always accurate, always on time promise of a data utopia. In its place, everyone now is trying to carve out their own analytical niche. Everyone is flexing their own data muscle, if you will. And everyone is choosing their own technology and software. Right? So we have these circumstances right now within the organization that we see. So we can now begin to ask the question if BI with a capital B is dead or is it dying? 
is it morphing into a new field that's bigger, better, more integrated, more cohesive than ever before? Is it becoming a field where the creative and the analytical are equally prized or not, right? That's what's, what's, what we are seeing, whether or not BI with a capital B is dying or not, and whether it's becoming something else. So what is the future and where do we think we may be going? And we can look at this just from the circumstances within our own companies, uh, within the marketplace, within the technology sector that's emerging right now. Right? If BI with a capital B is dead, then the really tricky thing that we see is that the BI with business intelligence with a smaller B is becoming even more pervasive and popular than ever before. And why do I say capital B and smaller B? By capital B, I mean some special centralized department in an organization. By smaller B in BI, business intelligence, I mean that, that there is no centralized division that necessarily exists and that necessarily can furnish everything that the organization needs. And that's the reality that business intelligence technology and functions are becoming ever popular, ever more pervasive throughout the organization. Tableau and ClickView and Tipco and all of these companies always say that they are trying to create a software that enables people who ask the question. The people who ask the questions and the people who use technology to try to be able to answer the questions were different people before. We want to be able to bridge the gap, they say. Right? They want to be able to bridge the gap. And that's what they are doing with the software. So as BI technology becomes powerful and easy to use, as the general aptitude of a corporate worker to leverage technology improves, the traditional roles of business intelligence analysts, ETL developers, data modelers, or business requirement analysts may no longer be the same. There are some or few distinct possibilities that we can see. Perhaps all the information management and business intelligence roles will merge into one or two roles just as several new software applications have merged these functions. One can think of the aforementioned or what I mentioned before, the data designers and data storytellers. These titles are coming into full. Will they replace the ETL and BI engineer? Perhaps they will, perhaps they will not. Perhaps the new engineer will be a new breed who will be a data wrangler, a graphic designer, and a creative writer combined. And perhaps the generic analyst of every department of an organization in corporate America will just subsume this function and perform them with ever more powerful technology. I think all of these three possibilities are real, that they will happen. That, that that's what the future does look like, that the, the general day-to-day -day BI functions will be subsumed by analysts because they will have BI software at their disposal. So they will be able to do all of those things. And they will be able to do it because they will also have direct access to database. And they have better understanding of data than ever before. Right? So some of the conclusions that we can make out of this, of course, um, I'm not betting by the way. This is not so. But some of the conclusions that we can clearly make out of this are that Chances are that DI departments will morph into centers of education. That there will be some kind of a data education center that a business will need to have where, uh, where you give training about the tools and then everybody goes and does their thing. It's quite possible that something like that can happen. But real business intelligence will be performed in every department of an organization. Chances are that today's BI departments will become tomorrow's advanced analytics department. There's still a need for analytics. It will just become statistics, epidemiology. In the case of uh, healthcare, people will migrate to bigger and better things, to data science, possibly, 
to advance genetics. So that the present day information worker will become more and more of an information or data scientist. Chances are also that a demand for a single enterprise BI strategy will be abandoned because it takes too long, it is too cumbersome, it is paved with too many competing interests and opinions. But it becomes ever more important in this scenario to have a comprehensive and cohesive business intelligence strategy. And by that I mean not a single strategy, but allowing each department and organization to have their own strategy and then build a convergence of that multiplicity of strategies. So it would be better for people to focus on converging that strategy into compelling people to come together to collaborate and create a collaborative business intelligence strategy rather than a single business intelligence strategy that everybody must subscribe to. Okay. In the meantime, I think there's going to be some chaos and anxiety. Right? Try not to worry too much about this information chaos, lack of editorial oversight, non-curated assets. Remember that the wild west of data has always existed and to some extent always will. Before it used to exist in Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, access databases in your organization. There is no doubt that it does continue to even today. What's better is now people will do this on secure servers. <laughs> Be prepared to get ready for junkyards of dashboards that people create and that nobody uses. It is going to happen. Some of this chaos will remain. It's not like it never existed. It always existed. And it will continue to exist to some extent. That doesn't mean we start policing different departments in their data strategy. It's not going to compel them to participate in a single enterprise BI initiative. Again, the desire to control your data destiny is universal. To cultivate an atmosphere of pervasive business intelligence, you can only push business intelligence deeper into the organization, into different departments, not recoil from it. Efforts to centralize, to create a single strategy, to create a single BI department, to serve everyone's need will always fail. Everyone will redundantly create their own analytics department. It's happening right now, right? So something needs to change when these things are happening. And I think it's, it's useful to go towards a more collaborative, cohesive, BI strategy than to go towards a single BI strategy. What I call the convergence strategy rather than a master strategy that everyone must subscribe to. Stakeholders will have to invest and focus on that rather than a single enterprise BI platform. Spend more time on seeking a culture of trust and collaboration and getting everyone's buy-in on some enterprise BI assets rather than impose a single strategy. A culture of data-driven decision-making will not usher without the embrace of these new technologies. People will embrace them anyways. And without incorporating some of the new things that are emerging, the critical things that are emerging from creative writing being incorporated into business intelligence to graphic design being in incorporated into the user experience, those things are becoming more and more critical. And I think that's where everybody should focus their efforts on because that's what's going to create compelling enterprise assets. So to recognize and realize this true potential, I think these are some of the things that, uh, there are things that will happen and some of the things that will need to occur. And that's how we see it in Premier Connect Enterprise. These are the changes that we are seeking ourselves. Uh, and that means, you know, we are going to also uh, incorporate some new tools and technologies to enable some of these things. I think we already have Tableau and we want to empower everyone to use it more and more uh, in a sophisticated way 
not just to create some bar charts. This is not about creating bar chart madness in your uh, Tableau environment. It needs to become more meaningful, and so we are going to also try and um, create analytic frameworks that help people understand what we mean by uh, a creative, uh, communicative business intelligence uh, platform uh, or framework. And uh, you'll see us use more and more of that with the assets that the Asset Factory team has been developing um, and trying to engage with most of you around that. With that, I think I have quite a lot of time to answer questions if anybody wants to either ask them or, you know, I would have talked about technology and maybe I can incorporate that. Uh, what are the new technologies that we see are doing some very, very interesting things. Uh, I think, uh, of course, you guys know Tableau and ClickView, which are majorly at the forefront of uh, doing data preparation and data visualization. Tableau is still a little weak at uh, data preparation, but they keep on increasing their their capabilities there. They are scheduled to incorporate advanced analytics or statistics in Tableau 10. And so by the end of this year, PCE will try to move on to Tableau 10 to kind of leverage that. Uh, there are other data preparation tools that are phenomenal and that integrate directly with uh, Tableau and ClickView and uh, all the other uh, other tools that are coming up, you know, I think you guys have heard of the name Trifecta, um, Exara, and most importantly, Alteryx in the data preparation world. Uh, they are doing some phenomenal things in this area of data preparation uh, in trying to cut out all the heavy-duty ETL tools, and they create they create files that can be directly consumed in that can be directly consumed in Tableau and uh, and other new tools, uh, other new data visualization, data discovery tools. So, so that that can become extremely uh, potent because you can do a lot of prototyping very quickly with these kind of tools um, uh, and enable a sort of uh, sort of uh, late binding architecture. This does not mean that you can bypass completely master data management and semantic harmonization, two things that are very, very important in healthcare if not in other industries. So those two things are very important, but there's good news in that area too. There are tools that are sophisticated tools that are coming online that allow lightweight MDM and semantic harmonization. So we definitely are looking into those tools too. And, uh, you know, I talk about Alteryx, Pixara, and Trifecta. All of these tools are, to some extent, managing that. There's a very cool new player in the business intelligence world that combines all of these things. It's called Clear Story. It's a very interesting software, brand new. I was just looking it up last year. Came into the cool vendors of Gartner. Um, and it's extremely interesting. It combines all of these things. I don't know how good it is at all of these things, but you can see business intelligence technology already morphing into the direction I'm talking about of reintegrating what was always meant to be business intelligence. In other words, doing information management and business intelligence, but also adding more to it, and that is adding communication and graphic design and creative writing into the mix. So. Those things are going to become very, very important for the new breed that's going to come about. And that's also, again, because it's technologically enabled. But the fields of creative design and creative writing are not technology fields as such. They are liberal arts fields. So you have to think about it in that that frame of reference on how you want to communicate. Now, knowing how to create uh, cool visualizations is not enough anymore. 
be ask, asking the tougher question of whether this serves the purpose, whether it is answering the question, whether it is enabling users to ask more questions. That's going to become extremely, extremely important. Um, so I would say, you know, uh, having a, having a, uh, what I would love to see is somebody having a degree in journalism and healthcare, right? And then they using these softwares, they would do amazing with these kind of softwares. And fortunately, more and more schools are now offering data courses to everyone. I was recently with my friends at several universities in North Carolina at Elon, some of the major liberal arts universities. Elon, of course, Duke is the Harvard of North Carolina. It's probably, I think, even better than Harvard. Uh, I was at all of these schools and everywhere the story was the same. Students are learning medicine, students are learning anthropology, students are learning journalism. All of them have data courses. All of them are learning Tableau. All of them know. That central idea that the people who know the questions should be able to seek the answers is becoming more and more important. So what happens to today's BI analyst 10 years from now? Well, the most important thing that happens is they go and grasp these other domains or they become data scientists or they do something else because we know for sure that in 10 years time we will have a new breed of analysts within each department of an organization that will be able to do everything that we were expecting out of a business intelligence analyst. It's not that far away. And it is enabled by the kind of education that's now available and the kind of technology that's available. I think with that I am going to end. If nobody has a question, then... Yep. So if anyone does have a question, you can always post on Premier Connect. Um, thank you all for participating in the BI work group. Uh, please take the survey at the end of this presentation and let us know what you think um, or thought. This session has been recorded and will be available on the DAC community. If you're not part of the DAC community and would like to be, please email DAC, D-A-C underscore operations at premierinc.com with your first and last name and then you'll have access to the community and you can um, post questions and discussion topics, etc. Okay, thank you everyone for participating and thank you very much, Rush. Thank you. Thanks everyone.